Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't we all stand to our feet? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And just acknowledge God in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's revival. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Night number two. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many are prepared? Hallelujah. Hallelujah for a large overflow. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time, amen. Hallelujah. I'd like to present this song and introduce the others, none other than our very own Pastor Elder Eli Porter Sr. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and give the Lord a hand praise. Amen. Come on, clap your hands like you're in love him. Clap your hands like you adore him. Come on, clap your hands like you got victory. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, I'm clapping like this because I got victory. I'm clapping like this because it's already done. Everything that God has promised me, it's already done. Somebody say hallelujah. Come on, somebody will see about going by people and say, it's done, it's done, it's done, it's done, it's done, it's done. It's done. It's done. I said, step out your seat and go grab somebody and say, it's done, it's done, it's done. Come on, it's done, it's done, it's done. Glory. Hallelujah. Come on, it's done. Come on, praise them like it's done. Rejoice like it's done. Hallelujah. 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 I feel victory. Woo. I said I feel victory. Woo. Somebody say hallelujah. Look at somebody say victory is mine, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. I can feel it in my hands, my God. I can feel it in my feet. I can feel victory all over me. Somebody shout hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, glory, glory. Whew. Glory. Yeah. Glory. Hallelujah. You know, Cameron, if somebody told me that they had a million dollars waiting on me, I wouldn't wait to get it to rejoice. I'm going to act like I'd already got it. Some of y'all looking like y'all don't have victory. <laughs> Look at somebody and say, I got it, I got it, I got it. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Come on, rejoice like you got it. Rejoice like you know you got it. It's just like you know it's already yours. This time, that's my good time. Come on, it's mine, it's mine. Victory is mine. The remembrance is mine. It's mine, it's mine, it's mine. It's mine, it's mine, it's mine. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's mine, it's mine, it's mine. 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 It's all mine. All mine. I ain't leaving that for tomorrow. It's all mine right now. All mine. It's all mine. It's all mine. It's all mine. I got fresh victory. I don't have no leftover victory. I got fresh victory. It's mine. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm not sorry, y'all. It's mine, it's mine, it's mine. It's mine, it's mine, it's mine. It's mine. It's mine. My Jesus. It's mine, it's mine. It's mine. 
Everybody excited about revival? Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. All right. Now we got that out the way. We appreciate the Lord tonight. Amen. We should come in here excited, amen, about what God is doing and what he's already done. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. So to thank God for my pastor, Father, Apostle C. A. Coward, Board of Bishops, our presiding Bishop, Bishop McLeod, District Bishop Williams, District Elder Finiston, to each and every one of you that sits in the body of Christ, we certainly thank God for you pressing your way to night number two of this revival. Amen. You may be seated. <coughs> Last night, um, I was talking about, you know, keeping your cup covered. And as we were discussing and talking about uh, this message, the Lord, we would start dealing with encouraging and that encouraging was sticking in my spirit today as I was praying and tonight I, I want to talk about encouraging and look at somebody and say encourage me please it's very vital that we as a body see what one thing about a body is that every part of the body helps itself you know your your head ain't no good without your neck, you know, your arms ain't no good without your shoulders, amen. amen, and then the, you know, when we were kids, they used to have the little, uh, little song say, uh, your shoulder bone connected to something and your knee bone connected, y'all know what I'm talking about, and so it's that, that skeleton type of song that teach you about the body and how each part needs another part. And we need each other, and we need encouragement from each other. One of the passages of Scripture that I like to look at is uh, Hebrews chapter 10. And what encouragement does is it keeps you motivated. Uh, it keeps you pushing forward. And as we said, as we said the other night, you know, sometimes people get in a place where they can feel like they don't need encouragement, but everybody need it. Mm -hmm. And you need people to encourage you that's in your circle. In order for you to grow, you know, even when you look at plants, plants, you know, they've studied that if you speak to plants, they'll grow. And that's, you know, a way of encouragement, just like we are. We're like plants. We're like trees. The Bible says, get the book of Psalms, chapter 1. Psalms, chapter 1, verse number 1. What does that say? All right. Psalms 1 and 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, for nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree. Now listen to this, and this, this goes back to yesterday's message. It says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the what? Ungodly. That deals with words, speaking. And this deals with encouragement. And we're like plants. We're like trees. And speaking positive things so that helps it grow. Keep reading, huh? And he shall be like a what? Tree. A tree. Planted by the rivers of water. Planted by the rivers of water. That bringeth forth his fruit. That bringeth forth his fruit. In his season. In his what? Season. In his season, uh-huh. His leaf also shall not wither. His leaf shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. It shall prosper, but... Verse number two says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Meaning that that law of God is placed in him. 
He's thinking about it. He's marinating in his system, and it causes him to grow. And this is what encouragement do to people. Encouraging causes people to grow. Because you want to do more. You want to step out there and do a little bit more because somebody said you did a good job. Amen. Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. Get the book of Hebrews, chapter number 10. And could I tell y'all something? You know, even when it comes to encouragement, you have to be receptive because not all encouragement means that you're saying that you are doing a good job. Some encouragement is you have an opportunity here. And a lot of times we don't like to hear those opportunities and that what stops us from growing because somebody say, hey, you know, uh, you did a wonderful job playing that guitar. When you do it next time, just turn it down just a little bit. That's encouraging. Because the sound could be different if it's louder. And then it can help him minister. See, when it comes down to music, you got to learn how to play with. I want to show you this. What I got you at right now? Hebrews. Hold on just a second. I want you to go to, I think it's Psalms. But just, you know, when we look at encouraging, it's good to, when we look at, and hear about encouraging. It's good to know that. And let me tell y'all something. When we when we talk, go to uh, Psalms 150. All right. And start at verse number one. Read with it. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the sauntry and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath, praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. All right. Now, when we deal with praise, as that's not the one I'm looking for, but it, it teaches you how to praise with. So it deals with the song and the mouth together, but that's an opportunity. So me saying that, oh, you did a bad job with that, or you, you need to just turn that down, that's not how you encourage anybody. That's not how you give the opportunity. See, we got to learn how to talk to folks when we're encouraging people, too. Even if, even if it's helping you do something you might not want, it might not be, you know, hey, you did this great job with this, this, this. But you can say, hey, you did a wonderful job doing this. Next time, try this. That's encouraging, too. And sometimes we don't like to be receptive to opportunities. I call it opportunities. It don't necessarily mean that you're doing something bad. This is something to encourage you to the next level. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. All right. Get go back down to the Hebrews chapter 10. And this year I want to hear it like I told y'all last night. And let me ask you this question. Did anybody encourage anybody today? No? Y'all don't listen. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 10. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 10. We need to try to start encouraging somebody. If you can't, if y'all don't listen about a daily encouragement, at least try once a week. I guess doing it you know, saying something bad, I mean, saying something good to somebody once a day might be a little challenging. Y'all here? <laughs> All right, 10 to 24 read, huh? <coughs> and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Let's consider one another to do what? Provoke unto love and to what? Good works. How do you provoke somebody to do something good? How do I provoke you to do good? Okay. Encourage. If I encourage you, I provoke you to do good. I provoke you to do better. So it's like now, okay, now I'm provoking Vontae to do better because I said some encouraging things to him. Then it goes on and says this. One second. Uh, read. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together uh -huh. as the manner of some is. Uh-huh. But exhorting one another. But exhorting one another. 
Uh -huh. And so much the more. And so much the more. As you see the day approaching. So we need to be encouraging people more and more as we see the day approaching, meaning as the end is coming. So the closer we get to the end, the more we should be encouraging each other. Now we see all this stuff going on in the world. That's more, more, more reason to encourage somebody. Hey, you're doing a great job. Hey, I want to encourage you about this. Let me say something kind to you. Because why is it so easy for you to fire off and say negative things to people, but it's hard for you to say something good and positive about somebody? Mm -hmm. Now, if I had to ask, and I ain't going to let you raise your hand on this, if I said, if you, what, what bad stuff you said about somebody today? What negative stuff you said about somebody today? You done went to that restaurant and talked about how bad the food was. You done talked about how, how bad the customer service was. All that stuff. We'll say all of that negative stuff. We can be honest and say, hey, you know what? I did say some negative stuff today, but I need to turn around and do something more positive or say something more positive. Yes, sir. Microphone. <coughs> All right. Well, if you call somebody to encourage them, but they just, they ain't having it. Well, a lot of times you do have people like that. You have people that don't like to receive encouragement, but that's fine and well, as long as you're doing your job to encourage. You follow what I'm saying? You can have people, that's just like, that's just like everybody that work at these restaurants. Anybody work at a restaurant? Ever, ever have, when you work at a restaurant, it don't matter how nasty the customer is, you don't match their nasty behaviors. Because now you've stooped to their maturity level. So now, if, if somebody come in the restaurant with a bad behavior, you should be very nice and polite with every guest. You follow what I'm saying? So you, if somebody not receiving your encouragement, you don't stop being an encourager because they don't want to receive it or because they're talking bad to you or they don't want to say, you know, or be receptive to the kind things that you're saying. Because you got some people that's like that. Some people don't like to receive good words. Some people like to be hard, mean, and nasty. You talk, hey, you're, just doing, you're doing a great job. I love the way you hit that symbol. You did a good job. I like the way you do this. Like this. And sometimes we just be so hard, we don't want nobody to say nothing to us. <laughs> you know, if you're like that, you need prayer. Y'all hear me? If you are like that, if you're that hard, and, you know, because obviously a lot of times, a lot of people are so hard based on what things that have occurred to them prior to. Years ago, it made me this hard, tough person. I, in my mind, I'm just hard and mean to everybody. No, you got to bring them to the altar. Hey, let, let's pray that away. That hardness, that, you know, and, it, and it's okay. And one of the things is, you know, men, we have that facade that we put on that we just want to be hard and so macho. But there's a soft side to a man, too. We talk, you talk to encourage them, cheeks start changing. You start, you know, look, you start looking different because somebody's encouraging you. Amen. Y'all with me? All right. So now he says, but exhorting one another. Look at somebody and say, I'm going to start exhorting you. And so much the more. So he's saying that if you're doing it, you should be doing it even more as you see the what? The day approaches. <coughs> as you see the day approaches. So now as we continue to get closer. You know, I know we're getting closer to the end. They, they, they turn the church into the club. I, it it got to be. We got to be getting near. Got to be getting close to the end. If it's getting close to the end now, I got to start encouraging people even more. Amen. Y'all with me? Get Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15. And, 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 and let me say this as well. Just because a person encouraged you, that doesn't mean that you're going through. Because when we look at encouraging, we, we, we mistake that we're saying, is, okay, sister such and such is going through, so let me encourage her. You don't, she don't have to be going through anything just to encourage somebody. Amen, y'all with me? You don't have to be going through nothing just to get some encouraging words because that's most case scenario, people think, people think in their mind is that if she's going through something, then I need to go say something to her. If she ain't going through nothing, that's even more the reason to still encourage her so she can keep going. Amen. Y'all with me? All right, 15 and 2. What does that say? Let every one of us. Let every one of us. Please his neighbor. Please his neighbor. For his good. For his good. Edification. Anybody know what edification means? To build. When was the last time that you spent time to help build somebody else? Say, I want to start building. I want to, I want to work on you. I want to help you in this area. I want to aid you in this aspect of your life. It's hard for folks to do that. 
You know why? Because a lot of us are, it start with an S, selfish. So a lot of us, we think everything has to be about us, and we don't want to help nobody else. We don't want to encourage anybody else. But this year, let me tell you, we need each other, and, and I'm going to keep saying this so you can get it. This year is going to show that we need each other. We're going to need each other's encouragement. We're going to need each other's help. We're going to need each other to, to speak some positive words. Amen. Amen. And get, get, get that phone off and do not disturb so somebody can encourage you. Amen. Take the people off all that block and all that stuff like that so you get some encouragement. Why y'all so quiet? Every time, every time well, nobody, nobody ain't going to encourage me. Yeah, you take your phone off, do not disturb. Somebody can call you. Somebody can be able to reach out to you. All right, it got quiet. Let me go back over here. <laughs> so he said, let, one, and let every one of us read. Uh -huh. Please his neighbor. Please his neighbor. For his good uh -huh. to edification. To edification. Give me 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And verse number 11. Wherefore, Wherefore, comfort yourselves together. Comfort yourselves together. And edify one another. Listen to that first one. Comfort yourselves together. What does that mean? That means that I, I, could get, I should be able to get to a place of comfort around you. I shouldn't have to walk on. And some of y'all be making people walk on eggshells just to be your friend. Walking on eggshells just to get close to you. Y'all got to break those behaviors this year. We got to cut all that. You know, people got it. They can't say one word without you flipping your switch. You just done. You cutting everybody off. I don't want to say that to nobody. Amen. Read, uh-huh. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together. We need to get comfortable with each other. Look at somebody say, I want to get comfortable with you. And see, comfortable means that we could actually converse and learn about each other. Because a lot of times in churches, a lot of people don't know nothing about nobody. And this is why we, we really can't have the ability or don't have the ability to mesh together because I don't know anything about you. In fact, I did at the YAM, one of the last YAM meetings I was teaching, and I had everybody basically write what they thought they knew about the other person. What was it? The age, birthday, place they want to visit, uh, where they from, all those different things like that. And we had a group or well, two people that didn't even know each other's first name. And we all go to the same church. Amen. A lot of us don't even know each other's birthdays. Amen. Because we're not, we're not getting, we're not comforting ourselves together. We're not getting comfortable around each other. Amen. You know how you was comfortable with your homies? Everybody get to talk, we get to laugh. Folks can't even laugh in church no more. People think they ain't saved. <laughs> <coughs> so they can't get comfortable. I can't get comfortable around you. I can't crack a joke around you. I can't laugh because you think that I ain't saved no more. That's the eggshells I'm talking about. Somebody came to me one day and said, Pastor, it's so hard for me to be myself around the saints. I said, well, what does that mean? I, I just can't be myself because they'll look at me differently. Because we don't have that ability to make ourselves comfortable with each other. And that comes from encouragement. That comes from unifying. Amen. We got somebody to say, I need you. <clears throat> so now we have to learn about each other. In order to edify, see, in order for, to edify somebody, you know, edification, building. That question, all right. When you're building, let me tell you something. Everything that's built has some type of manual. So if you're building something or building somebody, edifying them, you got to learn some things about them. So the only way that I can edify you, the only way that I can help build you, I got to see where you're at. Learn something about you. Jesus, and this is how, give, give me the book of I'm coming to you. Go to Matthew chapter um, 11, Matthew chapter 11 and 28. Matthew 11 and 28. Come unto me. Come unto me. All ye uh -huh. that labor. Go go up one verse. I think 27. 27? Oh no, go down. Go down. Take my yoke upon you. That's the one. 29. Uh -huh. Take my yoke upon you. And learn. And do me. what? Learn. Learn. So there is a manual for everybody. Only way 
that I can get comfortable with you and edify you. I got to learn you. And why is it such a struggle? See, what we don't understand, Deja and Church, is that it's our job to learn each other. We miss that. We think we're just supposed to come to church and run around, shout, you know, get a word and leave. That ain't what church is about. We got to have, you know, kingdom mind says, I'm learning you. And when I learn you, we're unified and we can build. I can't build. Now, one thing about it is that people like me and most men, when we get something, we don't really look at the manual. We just try to build it by what it looked like. Michael came over my house. I think when I first moved to my house, <laughs> it was like four years ago, <laughs> we, I bought a table. And we started just trying to build that thing up. And we wasn't looking at the manual, and then we had to start. We had to start all the way back over because we didn't look at what it said. Because it was screws, different screws that did certain things, and then every leg had a different letter. And we, I was like, man, we probably should have read this thing before we put it together. And a lot of times we jump ahead and just start trying to put stuff together, and we look at it and be like, oh man, that's that's messed up because I didn't read the manual. I didn't learn. I didn't learn about Laurent, so I didn't know that he got. It's a sensitive topic for me to talk about certain things. And so we got to start learning that about each other. And I, I found out, I don't, Ron don't mind me sharing this, but Ron's parents have passed. His parents, was, his parents passed. So certain topics that, you know, could be touchy, that deals with parents. But if you have never learned that, you'd be saying anything around people. Amen. Y'all follow me? Everybody understand that? So now we, we got to learn how to or, or get to a position where we're learning. Even Jesus said, read again, take my yoke. Upon you, uh -huh. and learn of me. And learn of me. For I am meek. For I am meek. And lowly in heart. Uh huh. And you shall find rest unto your soul. Why did Jesus have to tell them that he was meek and lowly in heart? Because they didn't know. So they'll start thinking about you. See, people will think that you mean. They'll think, and, and, and my brother say this all the time. Elder Johnson, he always said, he said, he said "I'm not mean. I'm not mean. It's my brother." He's not, that's, look, that's one of the coolest brothers in, in Bible way. I, I love that man. We hang out, when we get together week, when I say we cut up, we cut up. But you'll never know that because you don't know him. And when you get to know him, it's like, oh, that elder is cool. It's like Bishop Brookshire. When I first came to the body, I said, man, that brother, that brother looks scary, man. I said, let me stay out of his way. I went to open up a restaurant in Valdosta. We hung out that day. I said, man, Bishop, cool. We, all we did was laugh the entire time. And every time he said, he said, preacher, you're clean, you're clean. He clapped my head, and we just start laughing. But if you do not learn somebody, you'll treat them as if they're offending you, but you don't really understand what's going on. Everybody understand that? So now this is important that we learn, all right? Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I meet and lowly in heart. Uh -huh. And ye shall find rest unto your soul. So now this is what's going to be the outcome once you learn what I could give. See, we could be great friends. You just got to learn of me. A lot of times we can't even have friends in church because we don't take the time to learn. First thing we do is, oh, yeah, I don't like that about her. But you don't know why she's like that. What's going on with her? That might just be a, 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 that might be a sensitive topic that's going on. Something could have been said. Something could have been done that day. You just don't know until you ask. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Yes, sir. You got a question? Yes, sir. Um, so, I mean, I've had conversations with people, and I've, I've also heard that, you know, a lot of times people will say, well, I don't want to show saints a specific side of me because I don't want to be too common with them or I don't want to lose respect. Right. Um, you know, so how do you, I don't want to say, you know, how, how do you address that? Well, so only, only, only way with that is if you're, it, it depends on if you're a subordinate to that person or not. So and what, what that means is, well, I know you know what subordinate means, but that's like if somebody's over somebody or somebody's under, you don't give that person too much of your common side. See, Jesus didn't even allow everybody to see him in different vulnerable stages of his life because only certain people can handle that. I, you know, I play basketball with y'all sometimes. I can't go every time because then, and I know y'all got respect for me, but we go out there, then if they get too competitive or whatever, then, then, then you'll, you won't look at me as passing no more. you look at me like I'm just, you know, one of the brothers on the court. Like, I'm passing. Oh, hold on. Hey, hey, man. You follow what I'm saying? But, 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 so, so, but when it's, you know, same level, it should never, you know, it shouldn't be that 
case. And I know sometimes folks may say that, well, I don't want you to lose respect. And, and that's why it, you should have friends in the church where, you know, y'all not on the, on the phone speaking in tongues all the time. If I say, <laughs> you, should, you should have friends in the church where you can laugh, you can go bowling, you can play cards, you can play basketball and be okay. And they could see, you know, the, the competitive side of, of basketball in you, as long as you ain't getting too out of control or, you know, outrageous. But there should be friends in the church where you can be like that. But sometimes we do get to a level in our life in church, and you, you, you could be on the same level with a person. And they were like, oh, no, no, I don't want to play basketball because I don't want to be too common. Well, you're just a brother just like me. What, what kind of common? We need to be common. The Bible talks about them having all things in common. So what, what are we missing? But only time that's important, and I'll show you that from the Bible, only time that's important is if there's a leadership role. Uh, get the book of Matthew. Matthew. And Matthew 26. All right, Matthew 26 and 33, uh-huh. 26 and 33, Matthew 26, 33. Peter answered and said unto them, though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Uh-huh. Read. You got it? All right, go to the next one. All right, Jesus said unto them, verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Uh-huh. Peter said unto him, Though I should dine with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. Uh -huh. Then cometh Jesus with them into a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. Now, he only took three people and gave them that information. Can you imagine if he told the entire multitude that he's exceedingly, exceeding sorrowful, his soul, even unto death? Can you imagine that? Just like me coming in here, telling the whole church, y'all, I don't think I'm going to make it. I'm having a rough time in my mind. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. Saints going to be looking around like, bro, bro. Right? To be honest, a lot of y'all going to start feeling, and, and if you don't feel anything, you know, that's another story. <laughs> but that's just like me coming up here crying. If I get up here, up here crying, it's going to impact the saints. I can't cry in front of y'all. But I can, I can pull LeRon to the side, probably can pull Michael to the side, pull Frankie to the side, take him to the back office and talk, and get, you know, get, get vulnerable in front of them. And they, you know, they, they'll, they'll hold themselves. I think I pulled, I think I pulled him and uh, me, probably me, you, and Frank came. We had had some talk before. But just in front of them two, I can't do that in front of the whole church, get everybody together, put everybody out, and I just start crying. I'm going through it, y'all. It's just having a hard time. I don't know if I'm going to make it. This Y'all going to be looking at me like, man, that's just like the, 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 the boat sinking and the captain come out there crying and say, oh, my God, the boat is going down. The captain got to be stronger in front of the people. Captain can't show no sign of emotion. Because if the captain get frantic, guess what's going to happen to everybody else? A little crazy. So that's why there's a side that is shown from leadership only to certain people. Everybody can't have it. And that's why it is very important that even with you all, when you're venting and all that stuff like that, you're never supposed to vent down. You always vent up. And in certain cases, you can't even vent across because people beside you probably can't even handle that vent, that stuff that you go up they, they probably can't handle it. Somebody called me and said, look, <coughs> said, Pastor, listen, um, I've been trying to help, but some of these brothers, got, they got a lot of stuff going on. It's wearing me out. <laughs> I said, well, you need to tell them they need to call me. <laughs> and that thing, would be, that thing would wear him out. <laughs> he said, there's a little too much going on. I, can't, I don't know if I can handle all this. Sometimes we have vent across and vent down. It's like me, if I'm venting down, that's, that's just like me venting to my son. Venting to my son, that's venting down. 
Somebody that's under you. Somebody that look up to you, you venting down. That ain't no good idea because you're going to break them. Everybody can't handle that vent. Everybody can't handle that side of you. Everybody understand that. All right, so to answer your question, yes, in certain aspects, it's important. But now you got people that are, you know, same playing field, then they shouldn't be, you know, they, they shouldn't, you know, behave like that. All right, everybody understand that. All right. All right, now, go back down there to, go to the book of, uh, what was that? First Thessalonians, where we were just at? All right, 5 and 11. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. So we got to make sure that there's some edifying going on. And if I'm edifying you, let's build each other up. Everybody understand that? We should be at that level where we should be able to build each other up and be friends enough to build each other up. Amen. We need to have more friends in church. Y'all with me? So you say, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I want any friends. This is why, I'm going to tell you something. This is why a lot of people... A lot of people go back to the world because they don't have friends in the church. So they worldly friends, they worldly friends, yeah, well, come on, well, well, it, it ain't doing it in the church. You come on over there, well, let's hang out. That become dangerous because now your behavior is going to match theirs. Then you'll be back out where you used to be. It's important. That's why it's important that we, we, we have to build this relationship and gain friends in the church. Got to. It's imperative. Because if we don't, you know, we're going to be, a, it's going to be dangerous. Nobody ain't got your back. You barely got your own back. <coughs> Go to Proverbs. Seventeen. And seventeen, huh? Seventeen and seventeen. Oh, okay. A friend loveth at all times. <laughs> a friend love at all times. All right tonight. <laughs> I can hear you. Oh, <laughs> all right. A friend love at all times. Uh huh. And a brother is born for ever. And, and so now the Bible talks about how friends love at all times. Now, what does that mean? A friend love at all times, throughout everything, thick and thin. And see, one thing people don't understand, even in church. A lot of time we don't understand that friends do fall out. Oh, y'all don't know y'all don't y'all don't know nothing about that. If you if you if you ain't never had no fallout with your friend, they ain't never been your friend. Because friends gonna say stuff that you ain't gonna like, you're gonna say stuff that they ain't gonna like, but that's a part of building. It's a part of building. When you're building walls and stuff like that, you got parts in there that hurt, you know. <clears throat> when you're building a wall. You got those uh, those two by fours. You got to put nails through them, connect them. Gonna be some stuff that hurt when you build it. So it talks about how a friend love not at sometimes, but friends love at all times. We got to get past the brother and sister role in the church and get to the friendship role. Y'all with me? It's important. It's important. See, one thing about a brother and a sister is that. They got to make up and they got to be there because they're, they're blood. But see, when you have a choice to be somebody's friend and be there for them, see, Jesus said that he, you know, the Bible talks about how he laid down his, his life for who? Friend. Which is a great choice. That's a choice. See, a brother and sister, they ain't really no choice. You're, gonna, you're just going to be there for your brother. Even if you don't like your brother or sister, you're still going to be there because that's your family. I'm tired of him, but I, you know, I'm still going to, listen, I, I don't care what, what my brother or my sister do in, in their lifetime. They can do whatever they want, but I'm not going to let nobody beat on my brother in front of me. I ain't going to let nobody beat on my sister in front of me. But then when it comes down to a friend, and I got a choice, and I step in and say that, okay, that's my friend right there. Amen. Y'all must ain't never had no real friends in y'all life. Y'all, that looks like y'all just ain't never, y'all just had associates. Well, if you ain't never had no friends, it, it might be your fault. Yeah. 
Get Proverbs 18 and 24. A man that have friends. A man that have friends. Must show himself friendly. You got to show yourself friendly. If you got friends. This is before they got friends. They must show themselves what? Friendly. friendly. So if you don't have no friends, you may have a problem with being friendly. Microphone working? Okay. okay. Show themselves friendly. You got a responsibility to make sure that you're friendly. Make sure that you're showing. And then some of y'all, y'all just don't know how to, y'all don't know how to be, you know, be friendly. Don't know how to adapt to friendships. Don't know how to just be in that role and know how to mingle and all those different things like that. Some of y'all just got people problems. Just don't know how to deal with folks. And that's bad. You got to learn how to deal with people. Amen. Y'all here? Hello. Y'all with me? Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Matter of fact, everybody stand up and give the Lord a hand praise real quick. Wake some of y'all up real quick. Go on and stand up and give God a hand praise. All right. All right. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Yes, sir. Um, I had, we had did like a little men's night, I think maybe like a couple years ago. We did like a men's night, and uh, I did a little thing uh, where it's like, you know, just, just the different relationships, you know, this thing called love languages. And, you know, a lot of times we only uh, attribute that to men and women, but a lot of times that's, that's even true for friendships. Yeah. And, um, and uh, we were saying how like, you know, just, just even for men, how like, you know, you know, uh, if, you're, if your love language is touch or physical, you know, physical, uh, What's it called? What's it called? Physical touch. Yeah, physical touch. And how a lot of times, like, men show their affection by just resting or just, like, just grabbing on each other and stuff like that. Or, you know, sometimes it can be, I mean, just, like, you know, wrestling and stuff. Like, yeah. I mean, that's, I, mean I, have, I have four brothers. No, know? no, I understand. I and didn't so, miss what you, know, you said. Yeah, I understand. Times, like, we love each other by just, I mean, like, we don't even say, like, hey, I love him. We just. Yeah, know, just hit each other. Know, yeah. We just hit each other. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so, you know, a lot of times, you know, that, that's how, and I guess my whole point was, like, uh, like, like, we have to find out what, what friendship looks like to each other. Like, right. what does, like, being a true friend, because sometimes being a true friend means, you know, being able, like, you know, supporting me when I when I have a, you know, a, a recital or some type of event, being there, you know, and supporting me. Or, or another time, it can be, like, just being an ear to me. That's you just being a friend to me. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of times, you know, we, we project our own, what, friend, what being a friend like is to us, right. to other people. Right. When in reality, we need to do something different to actually show that we are a friend. Right, yeah. And, and, and that's, that's, that all comes in from let me learn of you. Let me see what friendship looked like to you, and I'll tell you what friendship looked like to me. And then we'll, you know, allow it to connect or mesh together. Because a lot of times, you know, you know how we can get being selfish. We just, we, we equate friendship to whatever we feel it is. And somebody else can think that friendship is totally different. There are different ways that people see friends. Amen. You know, some people might think people, friend, you know, and like these little, these young kids, my, my daughter, she'd be like, yeah, that's my friend. I'd be like, well, when did you meet us? Uh, uh, last week. Y'all going to hang out and move y'all stuff like that? That's your friend? You don't know these kids, you know? <laughs> kids nowadays just say, you know, they just sling the word friend around. But friends is somebody that you learn and have that connection with, and y'all could, you know, go through things, deal with stuff. Amen. But the problem is a lot of folk don't want to deal with this stuff when it comes down to friends. And this is why a lot of people don't get friends because they're scared of confrontation. Because people don't believe that confrontation should happen in friendships. Every relationship is going to have confrontation. Father-son relationship, mother-daughter relationship, Husband-wife relationship, fiancé relationship, boyfriend-girlfriend, a man and woman relationship, whatever type of relationship you got, there's going to be some type of confrontation. But what shows that we're friends is the reconciliation of the confrontation. How, how, did, how did I handle it? Did I shut you out and we just don't talk for the next few years or you just not my friend no more? If, if you can shut somebody out for three or four years, y'all ain't never been friends to begin with. At least you weren't my friend. <laughs> and, sometimes, and sometimes I'm your friend, but you're not my friend. Because I treat you a certain type of way, you treat me some, a different type of way because we don't understand what friendship means. 
Amen. And, 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 you know, everybody ain't nobody. Everybody ain't friendly. Everybody is not a friend. Amen. Read, uh-huh. A man that have friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. That's a different type of friend. Because they stick closer than you. But meaning, in essence, what this scripture is saying is that friendship, it goes through blood. When it says stick closer than a brother, it's talking about your brother is your blood, but your friends stick a little close, meaning that that blood don't mean anything. Blood don't make your family. Sometimes we say, well, that, you know, just because that's my blood, blood don't make you family. Amen. All right. Now, I want you to get, go down there to uh, 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 the 27th chapter and the 17th verse. Iron sharpeneth iron. Iron sharpens iron. So a man sharpeneth the continent. We of the always go to this scripture and say, iron sharpen iron, but we'll never <laughs> deal with that next part of that verse. We always deal with the A clause, but we don't deal with the B clause of the scripture, of this verse. It says, iron sharpens iron, then it goes a little further. So a man sharpeneth what? The continent of his who? friend. So this scripture is talking about a friendship. When we look at it, we say, oh, iron sharpens iron. Iron sharpens Give us somebody to sharpen iron. He's talking about friends. And then it deals with the countenance. So this means that when my friend is down, I'm supposed to be able to sharpen him. And you should know. You, and, and, and see, a friend knows what a friend is going through. If you don't know your friend going through, then you, you could be friends. In fact, you can get on the phone with somebody, and they can try to put on. If you really know them and they're your friend, you can hit, you, they don't even have to say nothing. You'd be like, what's wrong? Right? And the phone, you ain't got it. Even a text message. You say, hey, how you doing? Hey, how are you? Hold on. Something ain't right. I feel it, I, something's off. And then with your little lying self, and be like, I'm all right. <laughs> ain't nothing bothering me. I'm good. Lying. But a friend knows when a friend is going through something. A friend knows where or, or, or when there's an issue going on with their friend. Read that again. Uh huh. Iron sharpeneth iron. Iron, it sharpens iron. So a man sharpeneth the continents of his friend. The man sharpens the continents of his friend. Get the sixth verse of the same chapter. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Uh, faithful are the wounds of a friend. Uh -huh. But the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Listen to this. It says faithful are the wounds of the friend. What does that mean? My friend should have the ability to chop me. My friend should have the ability to get me together. And me not get upset. But he said, now, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Somebody always telling you all the good stuff. That ain't your friend. This is what the scripture is saying. That's your enemy. Somebody always tell you, everything that you do is good. Or it's good. Ah, oh, yeah, you're the best. Oh, yeah. And there's nothing going on. He said that's deceitful. But he says, faithful are the wounds of a friend. Meaning that when there's the opportunity to help and correct, I won't correct you because you're my friend. Amen. Y'all with me? See, y'all don't like nobody to check you. That's what y'all probably do. That's why y'all ain't saying amen like that. Y'all don't want nobody to tell you when you're wrong and all that stuff like that. It's all right. Listen, I want somebody to tell me when I'm wrong, when I'm wrong. I want my friend to say, hey, hey, man, you, you was wrong for that. I don't need my friend talking about it. It's all right. No, it ain't all right. If I was wrong about that, I was wrong. Amen. We don't like being told when we're wrong. Y'all all right? How many of y'all like being told wrong? Uh-huh. 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 <laughs> it's rough. It's, yo, why y'all acting like that? Y'all know it's tough hearing somebody telling you when you're wrong. You don't want to hear that. You want somebody to say, oh, yeah, it's fine. No, you was, you, if somebody said, yep, yeah, what you was doing is wrong, you don't want to hear that. 
You get quiet, start looking around like they ain't talking to you. Yeah, I'm talking to you. <laughs> Amen, y'all with me? All right, go back. Give me uh, Romans chapter 15. We got somebody to say, I'm going to start encouraging you. All right. Sound like y'all telling stories. Look at somebody else and say, I'm going to start. <laughs> y'all must have looked at the wrong, the wrong person. Look at somebody else and I'm start encouraging you. I'm going to start encouraging you. All right. Y'all remember them faces because I'm going to ask you the same question tomorrow if somebody encouraged you. 15 and 5, uh-huh. Now the God of patience. Now the God of what? Patience. Patience. Let me tell you something. Friendships require patience. Y'all with me? Friendships require patience. And not just a little bit of patience. They require a lot of patience. Because now I'm learning you. You're learning me. And there might be some things I don't like about you. Might be some things you don't like about me. But guess what? If we're going to be friends, we're going to work through those issues. Amen. Amen. I want to learn. I want to learn. It says, now the God of patience uh -huh, and, and consolation, consolation uh -huh, grant you to be like-minded. He wants you to be like-minded. One toward another. Uh-huh. According to Christ Jesus. So he wants you to have the same patience and consolation toward one, one another. He wants you to be able to console one another. Have that patience. Feel like, you know, it, it, ain't, get, it ain't going nowhere. It's not getting better. Have patience. Amen. And everybody is not like your old best friend that burnt you. Everybody is not like that old person that did you wrong. Because sometimes we get people confused. We think everybody like that same person. And that's why we don't have friends today. Because we got this big wall that we think everybody like Momo and, and Tyrone and all of them. <laughs> all right. Romans chapter 1. Romans 1 and 11. All right. For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift, to end ye, to the end ye may be established. To the end ye may be established. This is a part of encouraging the impartation. All right. Now, go down to the book of Galatians, chapter 6. Six and two, Galatians. We got somebody to say, I'm becoming an encourager. I'm an encourager. All right, read, uh huh. Bear ye one another's burdens. Bear ye one another's what? Burdens. How can I bear your burden if I don't know? How can I bear your burden if I'm not there? And if this is, it says that we're fulfilling the what? Law of Christ. So fulfill the law of Christ when I'm bearing your burden. Now, we got to go up a verse to see what he's talking about. Read, uh, 6 and 1. Brethren. Brethren. If a man be overtaken in a fault. If somebody is overtaken in the fault, can I tell you something about real friends? I'm still there with you, even when you mess up. I'm still there for you, even if you were wrong. I'm not cutting you off because you were wrong. Oh God, y'all here? He says, if a, a man been overtaken in the fall, uh huh. Ye which are spiritual. Ye which are what? Spiritual. spiritual. We need some spiritual friends that know how to cover me in prayer when I've messed up. That know how to cover me in prayer and don't just cut me off because I've messed up. Don't shun me because I've messed up. Oh God, y'all ain't saying nothing. You got some spiritual friends, man. They look out for you. They ain't going to kick you to the curb because you messed up in your walk with God. Because sometimes we can, be good, we can be good for that. Church folk can be good for that. Amen. You see, you're doing something wrong. They'd be good to cut, cut you clean off. 
I need some spiritual friends. Now, the spiritual friends do what? Uh-huh. Restore such an one. Restore such a one. In the spirit of meekness. In the spirit of meekness. Considering thyself. Because I have a consideration. My consideration is, hey, you know what? That could have been me at that party. Oh, y'all ain't saying that. Some of y'all are two thoughts away from going back to the club, and because somebody <laughs> was there, you found out about it, you're looking at them like they're crazy. Amen. My God, y'all ain't saying nothing tonight. Amen. Friends, spiritual friends have a spirit of forgiveness. The spirit that causes you to consider you. Hey, that could have been me, and if it was me, how would I want to be treated? If that was me that had a baby, how would I want to be treated? Y'all ain't saying nothing. If that was me that did this, how would I want to be treated? If I was struggling with this, how would I want to be treated? And that's how we should think. I was talking to somebody today. Somebody called me. Today we were talking about this little thing that happened with this church. Uh, we had the club music playing in the church. Everybody was dancing and all that stuff like that. They asked me what my thoughts was. I told them. I said, hey, listen. If that's what he did, I, that, that's his business, but at Redeemer Love Church of God, the Bible way, we're not turning the church into the club. The club need to be the club, and the church need to be the church. Now, I'm not coming up against the fella, and I, you know, that, that's, his, that's his thing, that's his thing. I ain't going to ever be in that position. I, be, I, I, I just couldn't do that. You follow what I'm saying? But sometimes, you know, some things that occur, we be quick to speak. But you got to consider yourself in everything. Amen. Y'all follow me? All right. Considering thyself. Uh-huh. Lest thou also be tempted. Lest you be what? Tempted. Tempted. Now, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere in, in Corinthians, it talks about how temptation is common. And it ain't just common to some. First Corinthians chapter 10 and 13, huh? 10 and 13. There have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. There have no temptation taken you, but such as is what? Common. Common. To man. To man. So temptation is common to man. Anybody can be tempted. Anybody can be tempted to do the wrong thing. But I consider myself. And this is type, these are the type of friends we need in the church. Friends that's considered. Now, I'm not telling you to, you know, encourage people when they, they you know, they messing up. And you say, oh, it's all right, baby. You can keep on tonight. I ain't saying do that. That ain't what I'm saying. But if somebody has a heart to do the right thing and they're trying, you don't beat them up because they done messed up. Amen. That ain't, you know, real friends don't do that. All right? Read, uh-huh. But God is faithful. God is what? Faithful. faithful. Uh -huh. Who will not suffer you uh -huh. to be tempted above that you are able. Uh -huh. But will with this temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. All right. Give me Ephesians chapter 4. All right. 4 and 9. And if you've never read the book of Ephesians... Especially chapter 4. Chapter 4 is a great, 29, not 9, 29. That is a great scripture. I mean, the, that, that whole chapter is very good. All right? Read. Let no corrupt communication. Let no corrupt communication. Proceed out of your mouth. Proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to the use of edifying. Uh-huh. That it may minister grace unto the hearers. So even if, now, when we look at this scripture, you know, we, we apply this to, you know, the verbiage that we use. But when we go up a few verses, go up to the, the 28th. Uh -huh. Let him that stole steal no more. Uh -huh. But rather let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that need it. Uh-huh. Let no corrupt Then it talks about corrupt communication. We keep going up further and further. You start seeing how people dealt with each other. And he said, even if it happens this way, you want to consider yourself. Don't let no corrupt communication come out your mouth. Y'all follow me? 
So when I'm dealing with friends, when I'm dealing with encouraging, I want to make sure that the encouraging is productive. Amen. And sometimes that if you need to read a book on how to encourage people, then you might need to do that. So you can learn how to say, what to say, what not to say. See, we don't have a problem with what to say. The problem come in what not to say. Amen. Because that what not to say could, could be, you know, and, and, and let me tell y'all something. When you're angry, this is the most time for you to be quiet. Amen. When you're mad at your friend, when you're mad at a saint, that's the most important time to be quiet. Because you're going to say something you can't take back. All that encouraging words you done gave him, you, you, you'll take all of it back because you're mad. I know I told you you played good on the bass, but I can't stand listening to you. People say that. They, they'll tell you. you know, <laughs> one thing about people when they're mad, they say stuff. They'll say one thing at one time, and then immediately afterwards, Say the, the total opposite. Say, you, you're the love of my life. You're the best woman in the world. You take care of my kids. I just love you. And y'all get in an argument. You, you, you're just a terrible mother. <laughs> you don't know how to cook. <laughs> you just told me the food last night was good. <laughs> when people get mad, they start saying anything. It, it, whatever comes to their mind, they just say. That's why you've got to practice Practice how to be quiet, especially when you're, when you're in that anger, when you're in that rage. That's why even in this text, when you go up to 29, when you go up a few verses, it talks about not letting the sun go down on your wrath, not giving room to the devil because, you know, you give room to the devil, you'll start saying all type of stuff. Amen. I got somebody say, watch your mouth, watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. All right? Read, uh-huh. 426. <coughs> uh -huh. Ephesians 426. Be ye angry. Be angry. And sin not. And sin not. Be ye angry and mm -hmm. sin not. See, that and sin not, that stuff comes from your mouth and your actions. So it said, be upset. It's fine to be mad. Sometimes you do get mad. Sometimes people get, you know, we're human. Stuff make you upset. Stuff make you angry. So don't, 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 don't cause it to. Don't allow it to cause you to sin. So even though I'm upset, let me be quiet. Let me calm down. Amen. And some of y'all don't need to be getting mad about everything. Sometimes people just get mad about every little thing. You got to be mad about everything. Live. Smile. It's good to be smiling and being happy. Amen. Y'all with me? Amen. Sometimes we get angry. If you always yelling and fussing and all that stuff like that, you need some help. You want me to tell you why? Because, no, you know, after a while, people ain't going to take you serious. If I'm always yelling at my kids, fussing at my kids, <coughs> they don't know when, when I'm really mad. Because if, that, if I heard that my whole life, if I'm really mad, you can't turn the volume up. <laughs> I'm always, oh, oh. Amen. See, when it comes down to me, I, I, it, it, I, don't, I probably get mad once a year. To be honest, I, take, I can take a lot. I'm one of the people that can take a lot. If I'm upset, if you ever hear me raise my voice, something's going wrong. I don't think my kids ever heard me raise my voice, but probably two or three times in their whole entire life. Something got to be wrong. If I'm yelling, or something wrong. But that, that's, the, you know, that's the emotion of, of people. But if you always yelling, it's, it's almost like somebody crying wolf. If I always yelling, you'll never know when somebody's upset. I've been barking at everybody every day. <laughs> The whole house is like a little military. <laughs> Amen. Y'all with me? All right, read. Uh -huh. Go to the next verse. Uh -huh. Neither give place to the devil. Neither give place to the devil. See, when we, and that, 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 call, that comes with re, unresolved issue. And let me, I want to say this. When it becomes a current, because I, and, and, and I think the Lord brought me in the realm of friends and being a friend to people because when you're a friend and it intertwines with being an encourager, you know, when we get to this place, you can't allow stuff to hold and harvest in you. Talk to them. Amen. This is why the Bible say, 
Go down there to Matthew. And I'm about to get y'all out of here. I know we got some nights to go, so I ain't going to keep y'all all night. Because I want you to come back tomorrow. Y'all with me? The pastor kept me here all night. I might take tomorrow off. No, I need you here. All right, Matthew chapter 18. And verse number 15, uh-huh. Moreover, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee. If your brother trespass against you. Go and tell him his fault between thee let and us, him alone. Let's talk about this thing. And this is the problem with friends today. Friends don't want to talk. Talk about it. Amen. Look at somebody say, let's talk about it. Let's talk. Talk about it. Don't hold it in. Don't let it beat you up because the more you hold it in, the more to beat you up and the more to drink. So then you can't even, you know, talk about it because you're just so frustrated. You can't even get your point across. Can't even tell what you felt. Can't even tell what it did to you. Because in all, I mean, friendship's going to have issues, go have fights. And this is why I think a lot of times we don't encourage people because we have these little faults. We got these little small little issues, a lot of little issues around. So now I can't encourage Michael because I got a little problem with him. The problem that didn't happen a week ago, two weeks ago, last year, I got a problem, so I can't encourage him. So now when pastors say go encourage the person sitting beside you, I walk like I'm in his direction and go down here and talk to Cameron. Why? Because there's an issue here. And a lot of times we, we're having a struggle. We're having a struggle with encouraging because of broken relationships. And this stuff got to be restored. It needs to be amended. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. All right, read, uh-huh. If he shall hear thee, if he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. Thou hast gained thy brother. But if he would not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. All right, go go to Hebrews chapter three, and I'm about to close. Hebrews chapter three. Hebrews three and thirteen. But exhort one another daily, while it is called today. What does it say? But exhort one another daily. How often should you be exhorting or encouraging people? Daily. So y'all thought I just pulled that out of hat yesterday when I said y'all need to be encouraging each other every day. I ain't pull that out of the hat. It's in the scripture. It say exhort one another. How often? Daily. Why? Uh huh. While it is called today. While it is called today. Uh -huh. Lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. So now, I got to get this stuff out of me. Let me make sure I'm encouraging you every day. See, if I encourage people, encourage a person every day, it keep in memory or keep my mind fresh that if I have an issue with that person, I can go in and fix it. Because I'm encouraging every day. If I'm doing it once every blue moon, by the time I go deal with the issue, it's like, oh, man. I got a problem with her. There's an issue here. But now I said, lest any of you be hardened. So if I ain't encouraging people every day, I'll find out what's wrong. Is there a hardened in my heart? Is my heart hard against you? Is my heart hard against you? Why can't I encourage you? When was the last time you encouraged somebody? Why haven't you encouraged that person? Because what happens is, if you got a problem with a person, do you speak to them? Of course not. Even if the pastor say, go hug somebody and tell you to love them and ain't nothing they can do about it. You're going to hug everybody except that person. Mm -hmm. Why is it when we talk about stuff like this, everybody get quiet? Everybody's getting quiet on me. All right, I'm going to give you one more scripture and, <clears throat> and I want to let you go. Get the book of Philippians Chapter 2 and 4. And it's my last one. 2 and 4. Uh -huh. Look not every man on his own things. Don't be so focused on your own stuff. 
Uh-huh. But every man but also. Every man also. On the things of others. So let me start focusing on some of the other things that, that Dante got going on so I can talk to him and encourage him and help him out. Let me focus on some of the things that Patrice got going on so I can help him talk to him, encourage him. Because when I'm always thinking about my stuff, well, I'm encouraging because the only focus is on me. I'm just focused on myself. I'm focused solely on am I going to encourage me or where is my source of encouragement? Amen. Y'all with me? Y'all here? So let's start encouraging and, and <coughs> especially a lot of you all that are in leadership roles, make sure that you're encouraging people that are under you. Encourage y'all older ladies, make sure you're encouraging the younger ladies. Y'all older brothers in ministry, make sure y'all encouraging the other younger brother in ministry. This is, a, this is a part of growth. This is a part of our growing is encouraging. Amen. Y'all follow me? I think that, you know, one of the one of the places that we do lack in is being an encourager. You know, because that's synonymous to you know, the scripture in the book of uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, when it talks about the ministry of helps. That's like the same thing. Ministry of helps is the same thing as a person encouraging. Because encouraging is helping. But we lack that. We lack helping people. We lack it. Because we be individualized. We out to get ours. Amen. Why don't you grab somebody's hand and let's come a little closer. Y'all musicians need to be on point. Y'all know that I'm closing. Y'all should be on the instrument. Come on, keyboard players. Come on, where y'all at? Y'all grab somebody's hand. Let's walk forward, and we're going we're gonna to pray that God touch us. Give us the mind to encourage. Give us the heart to encourage. And while you're holding that hand, I want you to just start praying for that person. Praying that they will be encouraging through them. Lord, we want to have that spirit of encouragement. Lord, every aspect of our life, Lord, we know that encouraging is necessary. We need help. We want to be helpers. We want to be givers. We don't want to be in a position where we're not giving, not helping, not aiding, not pushing our brother, not pushing our sister, not pushing our friend. God, we pray that even now, Lord, that we have the mindset to build strong friendships, strong relationships. Thank you, Jesus. Lord God, give us the heart to want to help. Give us the heart and the mind to want to give a lending hand Lord, we pray now, God, that you allow words of edification to proceed out of our mouths. Allow words of fortification to proceed out of our mouths. A word of help proceed out of our mouths, Jesus. Lord, we need the help. Lord, we need you to touch us. Touch our minds. Lord, make us different. Hallelujah. Lord, we want to be different. We want to be different. We want to be different. Allow us to show ourselves friendly that we could acquire friends. Lord, allow us to be that brother, be that sister that's willing to help all that my shine. Lord, we pray now that you, Lord, that you work it out. 
Lord, do it for God. Oh, God, send deliverance. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God, send deliverance now, Lord. Lord, touch our mind, Jesus. God, break shackles. Break yokes. Hallelujah. Lord God, we praise you. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. On the way back to your seat, talk about three people in the prison. <laughs> 